Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you very much for joining us for the second quarter earnings call uh, for the company. Uh, uh, I would uh, request Nirmal to just set the ball rolling and give a perspective on the current macro environment, uh, more particularly for our businesses, and uh, his outlook on how this looks like from a business performance more in quarter, quarter two and strategy going forward. Uh, yeah, Nirmal, if you can start. Thank you, Kapil, uh, and good afternoon, everybody. So, as we know, globally growth is slowing down, and uh, more steeply outside U.S. and maybe few countries like India. And interest rates are expected to remain higher for longer. And in this environment, India stands out uh, in very good shape and a sweet spot. So, all macro parameters in India show healthy trends. Inflation is in control. Growth is holding up. Demand for credit is strong. Interest rate upward movement seems to have paused. Financial system is robust. Tax collection is buoyant. Infra and capex cycle is seeing tremendous growth, and services in general are also doing very well too. So coming to IFL, there is no change as such in our strategy. So we remain focused on retail lending, and that too targeting customers under banks and geographies under penetrated by banks. And that's why we make such good partners with uh, banks for co-lending and uh, sale of our priority sector and small ticket retail assets. Uh, only one bit of change or move in our strategic direction, uh, oh. and that is our uh, uh, maybe the need and therefore our resolve to accelerate investment in digital technology and artificial intelligence or AI. Uh, we are poised to make some rapid strides in leveraging technological capabilities and digital capabilities riding on on one hand, unmet digital infrastructure that has been created by the government of India, and exponential growth in artificial intelligence and machine learning. Uh, our AUM crossed 73,000 crore mark in this quarter, and we are on track towards our guided AUM of rupees 1 lakh crore by end of next financial year. ROE is close to 4%, and ROE has been above 30%. Uh, gold loan, home loan, lap, all these uh, core Loan assets grew by about 5 to 7 percent in the quarter, quarter over quarter. Digital loans grew at a faster pace on a small base, and similarly, microfinance also witnessed a very strong growth uh, uh, in line with the sector trends. Uh, interest yield has, approved, has improved across uh, asset categories, again in line with the market trend. But contrary to market trends, we've been able to contain and keep our cost of funds stable. In fact, bring down by uh, 10 basis points, benefiting from low-cost funding uh, from multilateral agencies and uh, National Housing Bank for refinance for affordable and uh, housing for economically weaker sections. Also, the full impact of repayment of high-cost dollar bond that we did last quarter, uh, we saw in this quarter, and our improved credibility with banks uh, and other institutional lenders which give us uh, leverage to negotiate our rates. With our time tested strong underwriting standards and collection process, asset quality has improved across the board again, with the exception of gold loan, where despite reported numbers a shade, reported numbers being a shade higher, uh, the actual losses or actual risk of loss is very minimal. We are taking shareholders approval for capital raise anytime during the next one year, and in every resolution to tap the capital market at appropriate time. Uh, with this, I hand over to Kapis to uh, take you through the financial numbers in greater detail. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Nirmal. Uh, so before we go ahead to the, for the Q&A, I will just give a highlight and a snapshot of how our performance has been for the quarter. So for the quarter, IFL Finance at a consolidated level before non-controlling minority adjustment was 525 crore, which is up 32% by Y and, and up 11% on a quarter on a quarter basis. We recorded a pre-provision operating profit of around 922 crores for the quarter, up by 41% uh, YOY and 16% on a Q1Q basis. For the quarter, our consolidated loan AEM grew by 32% uh, to 73,000 crore. Uh, on a YOY basis, this supports a growth of 32% and 7% on a Q1Q. Further dissecting the AEM, our core products of the loan AEM uh, is driven by gold, housing finance, and microfinance. Uh, and, uh, and then the growth here has been around 34%, uh, YUY and 7% Q&Q from 69,744, which largely comprises of all our retail portfolio and currently now comprises of 95% of our total AUM. As highlighted by Nirmal, our gross NPA stood at around 1.8%, uh, 
and which is which is still marginally lower than our guidance to the market of around 2%, and our net NPA is around 1%, which is significantly lower and down by 58 basis points uh, and 20 basis points respectively when compared to the same period last year. Uh, with the implementation of the ex expected credit loss under IS, the provision coverage ratio on NPA stands at around 159%. Uh, in continuation of our capital optimization strategy, 40% of our AUM is either assigned or under co-lending arrangements uh, with financial institutions as of 30th of September 2023. And going, going forward, we will see a larger share of co-lending emerging in December like what we have highlighted in the previous quarters. Uh, the assigned loan book therefore stands at around 18,429, which is up by 19% YUI and 4% Q on Q. And more particularly, the co-lending asset book crosses a critical milestone of 10,000 crore and stands at around 10,576, which is 125% up YUI and 18% on a Q on Q basis. Uh, in spite of the rising interest rate scenarios in the last one year where we saw cost the MCLRs in the bank repo raising from around 150 to 250 basis point, uh, with, a, with a more uh, dynamic operations, we could reduce, we could get our cost of borrowing, got a muted growth of around 40 basis point YOI, uh, and sequentially it, it went down by around 6 basis point, led by some of the multilateral borrowing that we did, and we also got a very lumpy chunk of borrowing that could, we could get from the National Housing Bank uh, in, a, in a housing finance company, uh, not to mention the high cost MTN borrowing that we paid off last quarter, which had a full impact this quarter as well. Uh, from a liquidity perspective, we, we, we are fairly healthy. We stand at a liquidity of around 9,000 crore, uh, 9,078 crore to be precise. And during this quarter, we raised around 5,502 crore uh, through a mix of term loans, bonds, and refinance. And 4 to 8 crore was run through direct assignments of loans uh, to various banks. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, some of the key highlights of our borrowing this quarter has been a 50 million of borrowing that we did from U.S. International Development Financial Corporation. Uh, for financing affordable housing loans, and 100 million from IFC World Bank, uh, with 50% earmarked uh, to, to promote women borrowers and 50% towards green, house, green housing under, under the underserved category, uh, and around 1,500 crore that we have already drawn from the National Housing Bank. Uh, we have a positive ALM whereby inflows cover exceeds uh, and the expected outflows across all our buckets, and with the net gearing at a healthy position at around 3.3x. Uh, our analyzed ROE for this quarter uh, has, is, is around 3.1%, uh, supported by a healthy ROA uh, of around 39 uh, which moves up our earning per share uh, to around 125 for the quarter, uh, up 25% by UI and 11% on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. Uh, our capital adequacy stands firm at around 205 for the housing finance company. HFC is supported by... Uh, by the capital infusion that we got, uh, it stands at around 47.6, and Samasta is 21%. Uh, our CR is, of course, well above the minimum threshold requirement of 15%, clearly suggesting that we are able to grow ourselves without impacting hugely on the capital position through the on-book, off-book strategy, which has been holding for us well. And not to mention the healthy internal approval, which is coming from, from, from the name which we have been maintain, able to maintain over the last few quarters. Uh, with this, uh, I open the floor for questions and answers. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, and thank you very much. Thank you very much. We'll now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants, you may press star and one to ask the question. The first question is from the line of Shweta Daptardar from Vilara Capital. Please go ahead. Thank you, sir, for the opportunity and congratulations for a great set of numbers. I have a couple of questions. One is, so most of the NBFC management, I have been calling out concerns on small ticket lending or personal loan segments. Um, you being, uh, Mr. Jain, you being a veteran, uh, what are your inputs, especially in light of ISL finance portfolio on the digital loan for finance side? That, that's question number one. Yeah. So, I think personal loan, uh, maybe uh, uh, the fears are not completely unfounded because uh, there has been very aggressive uh, uh, personal loan portfolio built up by some of the new fintechs and new NBFCs, uh, and banks also become aggressive. 
but banks probably will have more established credit underwriting practices. Uh, as far as we are concerned, uh, uh, this is not a thrust product for growth. Our personal loan is more limited to our known customers as a cross sell, but our digital loans are more focused on MSME and business loans. Uh, but uh, in personal loans, I, I won't have the details, but uh, uh, the, I mean, the, the, many of the fintechs, uh, the new account, new practices for underwriting that they follow uh, can have risk and those risks manifest more in the down cycle and then the economic activity slows down. I'll be cautious. No, uh, my second question is pertaining specifically to gold loan portfolio. So how are the LTV uh, ticket size and customer segmentation working for us on the gold loan side? Have there been any shifts given the current market scenario? Thank you. Not really. I think our gold loan portfolio and the customer profile, because there are millions of customers, they remain broadly the same. Uh, in terms of our average ticket size, there is a uh, there is a little increase, but that is so. Which used to be say around seventy thousand rupees last year, is around seventy three thousand eight hundred rupees uh, in the uh, last quarter. So I mean that is basically inflation and the increase in gold prices. But broadly, uh, the customer the target customer segment remains the same. Noted. That's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Abhijit Debrewal from Motila Loswal. Please go ahead. Yeah, I'm out. Yes. Yeah. So the first question, again, I mean, I have two questions, one on gold loans, the other one on home loans, both uh, pertains to uh, strong growth that we're seeing in both the segments. Um, just wanted to understand first on gold loans, uh, what would you attribute this uh, uh, strong momentum in gold loan growth. Uh, is it predominantly uh, the distribution that we have built or or would you kind of attribute it to the fact that you're also uh, doing fair amount of uh, co-lending in gold loans, which uh, perhaps allows you to offer uh, very attractively priced gold loans to customers uh, despite being in NDFC. So if you could just help us understand that while, I mean, checks seem to suggest so, that... I think gold loan uh, growth in the gold loan asset, loan asset, <coughs> is primarily driven by, one, uh, the distribution that we have built over the last two, three years, and two, our very customer-centric uh, and friendly practices that we have. I don't think that co lending in any way helps because, in fact, if you really notice, co lending cost is higher than the cost of borrowing. So that doesn't allow us to price the product cheaper. And uh, in fact, it's primarily because of uh, the distribution strength that we've built. So if you see the number of branches, uh, then the way we have grown over the last two, three years has been uh, very significant. In fact, more than 50-60% growth in number of branches alone. And uh, still, if you look at our brand, our productivity per brand is around eight, eight and a half crore compared to say 12 crores of the leading player in the industry. So, uh, it's more, I mean, I, I would say that the primary reason is the distribution that we have built over the years and then the customer goodwill that we are building and getting repeat business also from the past. Perfect, sir. So, and, and a similar question on, on home loans as well. Um, different industry experts kind of seem to suggest that there is some slowdown that uh, we are seeing in urban affordable housing. Uh, in ticket sizes between 15 to 25 lakhs, 15 to 30 lakhs, there about some slowdown being seen. Um, different reasons being attributed. Some of them say that there is a supply constraint, uh, which is which is there when the CLSS was withdrawn for for the developer community. Uh, but if I kind of look at our home loan franchise, continues to do very well, uh, continues to grow from strength to strength. Um, do you think it is predominantly because our business model, as, as I understand it, um, uh, also leverages uh, these developer APS extensively, which most other, at least listed uh, HSCs don't. Do you think that is a moat that we have kind of built in our uh, home loan franchise today, which is helping us uh, when, when there is a more of a narrative of a slowdown that we are seeing in smaller ticket mortgages? 
Uh, yeah, which is, in fact, uh, we, you know, we have Monu, who's the CEO yeah. of our uh, housing finance company. He's there on the call, and then probably yeah, can take yeah. this. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Nirmal. Uh, I agree. So, Abhijit, you rightly said that we have been seeing the reports that in the, over, the metros and the hubs, there has been a constraint in the supply in the affordable housing. But if you look at our uh, expansion of our distribution, which we have done in the last about two years' time, uh, this is playing out to offset us any uh, slowdown in the in the tier one in the metros. Uh, the constitution of our, which we call as expansion branches, as a percentage of the overall disbursement has, uh, monthly disbursement has increased. So whatever marginal slowdown we are seeing, uh, which is absolutely correct, uh, we have been able to offset by the distribution. Uh, if you will see the kind of manpower we have added and the distribution we have added. Uh, currently, we are in presence in about 370 plus locations. So obviously, that is offsetting it. Uh, secondly, uh, as far as the uh, APF uh, uh, thing is concerned, yes, we have decent relationships which continue to thrive. But majorly, this growth continues because of our expansion branches, which we have worked on for the last two years. And we hope to see carry that momentum uh, forward. And just in the interest of time, one last question. You know, sir, I mean, when I look at uh, Samasta, uh, obviously uh, growing at a very, very strong clip, uh, I mean, do you think uh, going forward you will uh, kind of look to slow down here or, or are we still looking at uh, close to 50% kind of a bio growth for the next few years? I think uh, maybe for a year or two it may continue at that pace. Uh, in fact, in the COVID, uh, you know, the things have slowed down. So there was a bit of a catching up with the natural trend line. But as the base becomes larger, the growth will slow down in percentage terms. Got it. This is really very, very useful. Uh, congratulations and all the best. Thank you. Thanks, Arjit. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one to ask the question. Next question is from the line of Anusha Raheja from the Laren Bursha. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for taking my question and congrats on good set of numbers. Firstly, you said that, uh, you know, you might require a capital over the next one year's time. So that is for the subsidy or for the parent company. So the approval that we have taken is for the parent company. And in the subsidy, we can, uh, uh, like, you know, the housing finance, we have raised private equity. So we have both the options available. We can actually raise capital either in parent or microfinance and or both or, but that way in terms of our gearing, in terms of our capital efficiency, we are fairly comfortable. So we'll have to wait for the opportune time. Otherwise we can wait. We don't have any pressure to raise capital in terms of uh, requirement of capital for growth. We can grow uh, with the current capital as well. Okay. So the requirement is more specifically from the, I mean, um, you know, for the parent and for MFI. Because yeah, I think because housing finance, we have, the, yeah, we raise capital from Adia and still our capital adequacy is very high, is around 40, 45% or so. So that's more than adequate for next few years, yeah. Yeah. And secondly, on the gold loan NPLs, uh, you know, if I see there is a sequential rise there to 1.2% on levels. So what explains that? So gold loan, in fact, uh, you know, gold jewelry and ornaments, they are emotional uh, assets of the customer. And we generally are a little careful before, uh, you know, we just put them into auction or so even when the MPA and the customers are regular sometimes, you know, if the gold prices have fallen, customers may take some time. So we, we just uh, put up with that. But historically, if you see the loss given default in this asset class has been minimal or negligible. And... Uh, I think it's a festive season uh, in uh, this quarter when many people release the jewelry. So, I mean, it's a, it's a small temporary abrasion, but I don't uh, see any risk in terms of uh, the product class. Okay. And um, what was the MHB borrowing during the quarter? I mentioned on to that number. Borrowing? MHB borrowing. No. So, okay, what we are saying is that if you look at our cost of funding on an average has come down by 10 basis points in the quarter. And primarily because we get a low cost funding for our affordable housing and the economically weaker section housing finance that we do. So there's a refinance from National Housing Bank, NHV, where the interest rate depends on what kind of customers you are lending to. 
So that has been at a lower rate and uh, similarly we got some funding which is at a consistent rate from uh, multinational, uh, multilateral agencies. Hello. Yeah, so that has basically helped us control the cost of uh, fund. Okay. So, uh, you know, uh, so far I think this quarter we have managed the margins quite well. I mean, contrary to other NGSPs where, you know, they are facing the margin contraction. What is the outlook, on, uh, you know, say over the next two quarters, how do we see, uh, you know, margins uh, panning out? So, you know, actually we have focused only on four, primarily four, which is mortgages, uh, uh, MSME lending and uh, gold loans and microfinance. So in all these, uh, and affordable housing, affordable home loans, a significant part of mortgages, uh, we have the power, I mean, we have the pricing power in the sense that market is not so sensitive, sensitive to interest rate, and we are typically able to pass on the increase in interest rate that happens systematically. And on the other hand, in the last few years, we have been able to improve our financial position, our credibility through the cycle, and uh, also the low, the high cost dollar bonds that we had, which were we raised during the times of COVID, we are repaid. So, you know, going forward, I think we should be able to maintain our margins. So our NIM will remain at around seven and a half percent or thereabout. Yeah. Yeah. And just lastly, on the growth side, you know, so far we have seen a quite, you know, strong growth across segments like home loans, gold loans, and on the MFI side. See, so over the next one to two years, uh, you know, do you, uh, are you seeing on the ground level any slowdown in any of the segments or whether growth is a concern or you would prefer to grow at a slower rate or you feel that, you know, the current momentum, you know, can continue? So as of now, the demand for credit is very strong and India is still a grossly underpenetrated market in terms of credit to uh, small businesses as well as, uh, you know, the retail customers. So, uh, at this point in time, I think the momentum for credit demand is strong and the growth trajectory will continue. Having said this, I'll caution on a couple of things. If the economic activity slows down or if you see uh, some significant pressure on the interest rate, which can happen for multiple reasons, uh, then, you know, one has to be uh, cautious for that. But other than that, if the economy remains strong the way it is today, then I don't see any slowdown in the demand. Okay. Okay. Got it. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Anusha. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Karanish from ICICI Bank. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, sir, just two questions. One is on the your, uh, IFL uh, channel on uh, profitability. So, if we look at the first of 24 uh, ROE, ROA, uh, or in fact is the absolute price number, that is being far lower than what uh, we have reported in 22 and 23. So what explains that uh, profitability hit in first half, sir? So in standalone, uh, okay, one is that uh, we have actually, you would have noticed that we have moved significantly from direct assignment where the excess income or excess interest used to be capitalized to co-lending. And if you see our co-lending uh, book has the cross 10,000 crore milestone in this quarter, which is very significant. So I think this, the, if you, when you compare the last year, there's a significant component of uh, upfronted uh, assignment income. And on the other hand, co-lending book as it keeps building up, the, you see the co-lending interest income also keeps growing. Right. Right. So I, so then if you catch up, Sorry? Okay, so it is fair to assume that, let's say, uh, the uh, a shift from a direct assignment to co-lending is actually hitting the profitability at channel on entity level? Yeah, yeah, and see, another thing that happens in a co uh, direct assignment many times, uh, if, uh, you know, the assets get uh, repaid faster, then obviously you have to take right. the operated income as a, a reversal also. So, but what we are saying is right, that primary reason is, uh, that uh, co-lending is basically uh, taking over. So it's a transition phase. And secondly, you know, because of digital finance uh, and one uh, account in our CRE being restructured, the provisions are higher. Okay, okay. Got it, got it. 
and uh, sir, secondly, at the uh, entity level, if we look at the first phase, non-point based income this quarter, it has actually gone up by uh, 23% sequentially. But when we look at the incremental assigned plus co-lending pool, uh, that remains static at around 2,000 odd crores. So what explains that, I mean, it is fair to assume that because of the higher interest in some of the assigned portfolio, the spread on the assigned pool might have gone up this quarter. One second. Uh, see, what is assigned income growth? The assigned book, okay, assigned book also is, I mean, has grown slowly, but there's still a growth. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, but so income from assigned assets, you're saying quarter or quarter or why are you saying? Quarter, sir. Uh, yeah, so the banks basically have a, a reset based on their MCLR. Just give me one minute. Huh? Yeah, sure, sir, sure, sir. Okay, sorry. And then uh, uh, this quarter we had an assignment in Samasta for the, you know, I mean, Samasta normally we had not assigned earlier, but I, there was a loan assignment of Samasta this quarter. Okay, 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 okay. So what is happening? Uh, it's still, uh, uh, you know, the co lending is, uh, I mean, most banks are not willing to, but we are able to assign that. Got it, got it, got it. So basically, this quarter, uh, we might have assigned higher under the yeah. star, which is a high leading book. That's why there is a high non-fund based income. Is that right? That's right. So in the summer star, I think assignment will continue. Got it, got it. Okay. And sir, just last thing, uh, at the uh, console level, uh, what should be the uh, AUM growth over the next couple of years we are factoring in? 25% is what we should, uh, you know, we have guided and I think uh, we should achieve that. Thank you, Nirmal. Best of luck for the coming on. Thank, thanks, sir. Thanks. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Abhishek from HSBC. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Hi, Nirmal. Thanks for taking my question. So, just a few questions. First, on MFI, uh, yeah. when we when I look at the gross stage three assets, they have not gone up, but the credit car, uh, costs have gone up, uh, you know, sequentially. So, have have, have there been any write offs because of which the credit cost is higher? Uh, yes, there will be some write-offs in uh, some of the... Can you quantify uh, how much it was this quarter versus last quarter? No, the provision has gone up because of as the book grows, stage one, stage two also has gone up. And the write-offs are 98 uh, crores this quarter, we have 88 crores last quarter in some of the... But the provision that you are seeing, because when the book grows, your stage one, stage two provisions also grow significantly. Are we saying? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think that's why provisions are higher. Huh. Okay. Yeah, but there's a right of increase of 10 crores also. Exactly. That's the, that's the right. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, and um, uh, when I look at the yields, right, the data that you've given on the yields, in Gold loan, the portfolio yield has gone up, I think, by about 1% in the quarter. So, right. the, I mean, can it be so sharp uh, in just one quarter? Or is, is, does this have any kind of one-off? No, this is, the actually, the gold loan portfolio turns very fast. You know, the average life is 90 days, 120 days uh, also. And the gold loan yield has started improving from quarter before last. So, maybe we are seeing impact in this quarter. But I, I mean, there's, I, I, oh, the, I don't see another thing that happens in this is that the average book is a little different from the quarter end book. Okay. So the, now I don't have those numbers with me, but when we reconcile the average book, then probably uh, that will explain the story better. So this yield is based on the average book. So what happens, the yield that we give in the number, in the financial results is based on the quarter end. No, I think, okay. so the yield difference, how much the yield difference in the quarter to quarter? 100 basis point. Yes. Yeah, yield has gone up as the market, the competition has yield, is, my yield has gone up. In gold loan, the impact can be quicker compared to the other asset classes where the assets have much longer term, like home loan. But in the gold loan, yield can move very fast. So the yield hike was taken when in gold loans? 
the last year? Yes, actually, we started taking from April because in the last year, the last two quarters, there was very intense competition from banks and from NDFC. So this year, this financial year, from April, we started taking. Uh, I mean, we we got back to the normal rates of interest and. Uh, we had quite a few teaser schemes and a low interest scheme that we would do in most of the places. Got it. And can you share that tonnage in uh, for uh, gold loans for this quarter and last quarter maybe? Yes, one minute. What is the tonnage? There is a 6% tonnage growth and uh, what is the tonnage yeah. increase? Is there in the data book this data? Yes, it is. Is there in data book Abhishek? Uh, 63 turns now. I'll, I'll pick it up. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it's there. Uh, just sure, sure. One, one last question on cost of borrowing. So actually, uh, two things. One, mm. when do we see the cost of borrowing start showing the upward trend? You know, because the market rates are stiffer, you would have some back book repricing. So when does I, it start moving up? I think we should be able to maintain at this nine percent. I don't think uh, unless the now. Okay, my personal view is that the interest rates in India at least have paused and they peaked out. I mean, they may not fall, but they might remain at these levels. Uh, in that uh, situation, I think we should be able to maintain at the current level. Ten basis point here and there, it can move around, but not beyond that. Got it. Got it, got it. Thank you so much, Nirmal, and congratulations Thanks. for Thanks. The Thanks. all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Anishin Chawade from Kodak Institutional Equities. Please go ahead. And uh, congrats for a great set of results. Uh, thank, thank you, Mr. Yeah. Uh, the first question is, uh, you know, on the operating expenses line, uh, now if I really look at your growth, uh, you've been growing faster to microfinance and uh, probably, you know, followed by gold loans. Now yeah. both these businesses have lower tickets, and in that sense, in that sense, tend to be sort of slightly more opex intensive. Uh, yeah. You know, and, and probably you know home loans and uh, the, the the wholesale businesses have lowest opex. But yeah. I think despite that, your opex growth is lower than the loan growth, so you seem to be kind of you know getting some benefit somewhere. So just trying to understand what's happening here. So listen, uh, you know we. We have slowed down the growth in our branches. So significant part of OPEX comes when you are setting up new branches. So if you really look at we are driving our growth by making our existing branches more productive and taking the productivity of a branch up uh, uh, as much as possible. And also with the our digital loan business is primarily you know end-to-end -end digital and there the manpower requirement is lower. Uh, so you know in fact OPEX is still at a much higher level and we have, you know, maybe room for savings over the next few quarters. In terms of OPEX or a cost to income ratio, because uh, as I said that if you look at our gold loan branch productivity, eight, eight and a half crore, there is a leading player is at 22 crore. Now, there's a very significant difference. Uh, so, you know, if we, we keep the branches uh, at our, you know, whatever we have, so the same set of people, same set of branches, if they can originate more assets, and build up, then obviously our, then, then our office should come down. But microfinance, I mean, practically, I guess the geographies would be different, right? So you can't share branches. Hold on again, sort of. No, they are, so even in microfinance, we have 1100, 1200 branches. Uh, so that also network which we expanded uh, uh, in the recent times. So if you look at our manpower cost on a quarter to quarter basis, what is the manpower cost here? That has gone up actually. Mm -hmm. And there will be some savings in our other cost, which is, what is the total of it? Just give me one second. So, 427 crore for the quarter, that's all in. So manpower cost has gone up so from 384 to 427. Uh, Operating cost has just operating cost also has gone up by seven percent in the quarter, which is very significant, and that is primarily because as we expanding the microfinance network. Uh, other expenses, you know, which is ex of employees and depreciation, it's up around fifteen percent, which is like less than half the overall loan growth. So, you know, that I think where my question was. Uh, no, that is basically because the new branches are not being set up, but the existing branches we add people and. So the new branch addition has been very minimal. 
on the digital loan side, I know this is a small business, but uh, growing very rapidly. So, what is the tenor of these loans? Now, tenor of this loan uh, varies from six months to two years, typically. Uh, you know, NPLs in this book, and I think the ratios may not be very accurate representation because uh, you know it's been growing very fast. But over the last six months, uh, you know, the NPA in this book has grown by almost like 25 percent. So, and and I would I would be I would believe that you know six months uh, lag ratio is a fair ratio to look at, uh, you know, given the fact that probably somebody may not default in three months, and you know we have a three month NPA uh, you know that condition. So, you know, so so are you kind of you know, worried? Are you seeing? And, and you have been growing very fast. So, you know, are you are you kind of seeing any concerning signs because of which you would slow down? It's a small proportion of the book, so it matters less. But uh, nevertheless, it's an uh, you know, it's a very fast. Well, this is yeah. right. So, if you see our state three provision in this is seventy three percent. So, uh, what we are trying to understand, I mean, okay, our strategy here is that the risk is priced in because these you know the interest rate also is higher on these kind of loans. And we are prepared that through the cycles, you know, and as books mature, they can be higher losses. So we want to keep uh, aggressively providing for it. But even risk adjusted return is quite attractive. How it appear? I mean, your your sense is that you will continue to grow this rapidly. We'll continue to grow at this base. It will grow faster. When the base becomes larger, the growth may slow down. And the uh, GNPs and NPs in this book will be higher than the rest of our. Other loan books, and that we price, uh, uh, you know, as we go uh, as we uh, to the customer. It's limited in house, right? There are no partnerships in this. No, we have partnerships to source. We don't, and we have a few partnerships, but a significant part of business is organic. So we do have partnerships, including Airtel and GPay and others also. Uh, but uh, by and large businesses you know but so okay many partnerships are for lead there are very few partnerships where the loan is sourced as such so our primary partnership or our focus for growth is uh, to have a digital partnership where we can get lead and we pay a fee but we do underwriting and we take the risk portfolio originated let's say by uh, you know a, a partner and that is kind of picked up by you it's, it's something that they, you just they just so what happens with partnership model is that okay, there are one or two small partnerships that we have, which is an FLDG, but there, you know, normally your interest rate and your income is also capped. So many of the players that have done partnership, they might give you 15 percent, 16 percent, and then a bit of a first loss. But our primary, our strategy is that we want to have full access to data. So we do underwriting, we keep learning, and we have full control on the credit quality as well as who we are lending to. On the yield side, you know your home loan yield is marginally down uh, on a sequential basis. So, and and uh, you know, so so is there anything that that we should be reading? Monu, you want to respond to this? Hello. Yeah. Monu, this is the last. Yeah, 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 yeah. I saw that. So it's a very uh, this is a very very uh, marginal change. It's uh, I think if you just look at it, uh, it's. Uh, Pretty marginal change, and it's primarily to do that how uh, the the uh, where we are playing out, how the areas are panning out. So there is nothing very significant in the yield change if you see. Rather, the portfolio yield has a shade gone up only. It's 11.2 to 11 percent in the quarter over quarter, yeah. but this 11.2 was also a bit on the higher side because uh, historically it has been 10, 10 and a half percent distance. So. I think there's already a bit of tapering off this quarter. Yeah. But rates in any cohorts, or is it just competition that is driving? There's nothing in their cohorts, but it's just uh, uh, the the competition which is played out a bit. Yeah. This is a competitive uh, segment of the business. segment to be in. Otherwise, also overall, still overall, uh, I think 11% uh, is pretty pretty much okay in line with our strategy. Collaborates with, I think, the, the general industry view. Uh, just, uh, you know, on the lab side, interestingly, you know, the trend is very different. Your pricing, your your pricing power seems to be pretty strong. Uh, yeah. Although, you know, so is it something that it's a very different segment? Uh, I guess the ticket size. Is, you know, I mean, how, yeah. how should we 
you one really think of it because yes, yes, yes. that was also a reasonably competitive segment. Yes, yes, yes. So uh, for the last about uh, two years, like primarily earlier, uh, we were being focusing on lab only in our hub uh, places, but as we had had experience of expansion in branches, so we, for the last two years, we are doing uh, a bit of uh, lab business in our expansion branches where the expected yields are better than the hub locations, which is a very competitive market if you try to give lap loans in the uh, tier one in the metros. So the one which is we are able to source through the uh, smaller towns, uh, we have better yields. But this lap yield is, so this is in line with the industry, so even the competition will charge similar yields. And the primary reason is that this business has significant uh, operating cost as well. And is a lot, you know, it's not in terms of the physical collection of the installment as well as processing and in smaller locations for a small ticket lap of 4.5 lakh rupees, 7, 8 lakh rupees, the cost of title, valuation, everything is uh, significant. So, you know, when the industry rates are also higher because uh, there's the cost structure of this the segment of business uh, as well. Final question, if I can, and that's on the microphone. Yeah, uh, you know, on the microphone side, you know, there have been some concerns in the industry that uh, you know, delinquent customers tend to get refinanced by, uh, you know, uh, basically get, get, get refinanced by, by finance companies so they move from one company to the other. So I think in this regard, uh, you know, what is the policy that you follow? Uh, at some point? Actually, delinquent customers, uh, a credit score and, the uh, you know, they will be basic. So all the customers in, the, uh, in microfinance are reported to bureau. So they're going to be like, if a bank is you are there on call. Yeah, yeah, Nirmal, I'm there on call. Yeah, with as, aspect to the policy in terms of our lending, we don't lend to any customer who's more than 30 BPD and who's got an outstanding of more than 4,000. 4, See, a couple of companies don't report uh, the credit bureau on a very uh, daily basis. So we give them a leeway of 4,000 maximum, which could be one EMI in uh, some ticket prices. So ours is very restricted into the, we don't give to any customer more than 30 BPD. It, which means that, you know, if the customer has been an NPA, comes out of NPA, you would lend him after a particular period or something of that sort. No, no. I'm talking about, uh, no, no, customer is not in an NPA. I'm talking about I'm a particular that, customer. That, that's right. But I'm saying that customers who, who sort of, you know, come out of an NPA, is there a full off period for, uh, you know, reimbursement? Yeah, that, that, that naturally applies. You know, we, we also have a track record of, once we look at the credit bureau, we have a track record of the customer. And they, she's coming out of the uh, NPA, we definitely will not let. Questions? All the best. Thank you. Parasivans, you may press star and one to ask the question. Next question is from the line of Deepak Poddar from Sapphire Capital. Please go ahead. Hello, am I, uh, am I audible, sir? Yes. Uh, yeah, so my question revolves around your uh, ROA. I mean, uh, uh, now the, this quarter also we have seen a very good growth, and accordingly ROA is 3.9%. Uh, uh, but what sort of sustainable or steady state or aspirational ROA uh, as a business we are looking at going forward? Now, considering also because you're, uh, you 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 told that uh, your co-lending share will increase, right? Uh, so the, uh, that will be ROA accretive. Uh, um, that that's what I presume. Yeah. So so some color on it would be helpful, sir. You know, as, as what Nirmal mentioned, this Kapish here, so if I can just question, as Nirmal mentioned, uh, uh, in spite of the rising interest rate scenario, we have been able to pass on our, our rate hikes to our borrowers. Our spread across quarters have actually moved up. We have we have done our investments with regard to branch expansions, which means that there wouldn't be any more incremental investments coming in to, to meet the growth targets from our operating expenses perspective. All these attributes should help us in maintaining our overall our NIMS and uh, with, with better optimization on our cost, we believe that we should be able to maintain our, uh, our ROA in the range, uh, which could be between 3.7 to 3.9, touching towards 4. So we believe that we should be able to maintain our ROA at the levels where they are today. Great. And great. there could be uh, some more should spots as well there. Yeah. I understood. And, and, and my uh, second uh, question is on your credit cost. I think ideally that could also help your ROA because ideally your credit cost in the range of 2.25 to 2.5% is little on the higher side, right? I mean, considering that yeah, it should be on the more longer term steady state basis should be 
uh, within 2% yeah within uh, i mean uh, uh, why not below 1.5 to 1 by 1% uh, that's right uh, no no so uh, i was trying to understand why it can't be below 1% i mean uh, no, okay. because of the mfi business that you expect uh, no so no okay i'll tell you what over a period of time so microfinance business historically prior to covid used to have much lower npa but now most of the industry people expect longer term uh, credit cost in microfinance business to be around 2% or so similarly in digital loan it can be little higher than 2% also and uh, what you are saying is right that at least if you look at home loan and gold loan it should be much lesser absolutely but i think as things stabilize over a period of time uh, uh there again it depends on the relative share of the unsecured loans in microfinance and digital loan uh, but it can be lower it should be lower than what uh, you know uh, if not one at least maybe closer to one and a half 1.5 yeah because that straight away adds 0.75% to your uh, roa right uh, yes it should uh, so so a trajectory which is at 3 and a half to 4% can inch towards 4 and a half percent if our credit cost uh, comes below or closer to that 1% mark uh, that That yeah, that is there. But at the same time, because you know there will be little competitive pressure on the margins also over a period of time. So, uh, I mean, what you are saying, and one scenario it can happen, and at least the credit cost will go down, and that should straight away add to the ROI. But there will be many other variables, and there are many other moving parts. Fair enough. I got the sense. I got the sense. Uh, yeah, yeah, great. That's it. Thank you. Mindset. All the very best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. thank you a reminder to all the participants you may press star and one to ask the question next question is from the line of akriti banka from hsbc mutual fund please go ahead yeah hi can you hear me yes yeah hi i just have one question i don't know if you already addressed it but uh, how did your yields uh, how did you manage to increase in the gold Uh, book in this uh, quarter so gold loan yield you know across industry i think were improved because last qu- last year uh, quarter 3 and quarter 4 there was sort of you know intense price war kind of a thing because some people started teaser and some larger players started following up many banks also got into this with a lower rate of interest but you know i think many banks also now discover that if they do the separate profit and loss accounting of gold loan Then the operating cost is much higher, so it's not something which is uh, because when you are doing a fifty thousand, sixty thousand rupees loan for a shorter tenure, then the cost is higher. So I think it is actually the yield is going back to the earlier level. Uh, you know, the normal is getting normalized. In between, there was an aberration when the yield came down. Okay. So you think there is still some scope for for this to go up further, or the business? No, good? I think they will remain at these levels. Because even I thought by Q1 itself things are sort of normalized, which is when you ha- you were at 17 and a half, and this quarter is showing even higher than that. Yeah, impact comes actually with the lag of one or two quarters actually, because as earlier loans get repaid, uh, because they are at a contracted rate which can be lower, so it always spreads out over a couple of quarters. Yes. Okay. Thanks. That's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Jagar Jani from BNK Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, I just wanted to quiz uh, on the fundraising, uh, although it's an underlying provision. Uh, now, considering we are moving uh, largely off book, uh, which is co-lending and DA, 40% is what we are at. I think uh, for that book, and we are guiding for 25% growth. I think then 60% of that 25% only needs to be funded through internal uh, accruals or equity because uh, even if I consider the co-lending part of 20% probably it will push it to 17-18%. Uh, and we are already making kind of 20% ROEs uh, overall and we are expecting ROEs to remain stable. So won't this additional equity of 3,000 crores be a drag on your ROEs? where as you can easily find your uh, estimated growth of 25% through internal accrual itself considering we are moving more and more off book so you no know, it's a good question and uh, uh but you know as uh, okay so whether if you don't do this then probably the ro can move up further as our profit keeps adding to the uh, pool 
but as the you know we are in the finance business where from a rating agency point of view from uh, uh, you know the banks that are partnering with you they also want to see your balance sheet become stronger as your total assets grow i mean it's not necessary that we will raise 3000 crores that we should up to 3000 crores uh, but whatever equity addition happens which can be you know to our net worth 20 30% which may be in next 12 to 18 months we can catch up in terms of uh, roe and that will also help us grow a little faster than uh, what we have been growing till now right so, so there might be a chance that your growth trajectory may, might move higher post the equity fund raise and any any plans to go inorganic in terms of growth post this fund raise so we are open to opportunity but uh, is not something which anything is in nothing is on the envelope or nothing is in the pipeline but yeah if there are good opportunities we can always look at them Understood. Thank you so much for answering. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants: you may press star and one to ask a question. Next question is from the line of Adarsh from Anam Holdings. Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah. Thank you for taking my question. So broadly, if you can uh, break up the assignment assets uh, in the categories, and uh, same for the uh, coordination, and can you explain the economics of uh, both these groups, uh, both for you and for your partner? So assigned assets, we had 18,429 crores as on Q2 FY24, and. Uh, And coal and is 10,576 crores. Most of these will be home loan and gold loan. But if you want to break up, just give me a minute. Right? In uh, around 20, 2300 MFI. Okay. 7,500 in uh, in housing, including lab, and 8,900 in coal. Okay. So roughly 7,500 is a uh, mortgage assets. 8,500 or so is gold. And the remaining is the microfinance in the assigned book, and the core lending book again uh, primarily is gold and gold lap and housing. Gold lap and housing. Got so just uh, from an assign uh, from the core lending book. Can you just explain the economics, uh, like uh, how so it works? Core lending book uh, uh, for every product like lap, home loan, and gold loan. Uh, the interest which bank will retain is negotiated separately. Also, based on the credit policies, the region and the geographies that we do. So, supposing I'm doing the gold loan at say 16%, and I agree with bank as they are saying say 9.5, then what happens that every quarter, uh, whatever interest is accrued, that comes into the escrow account, 9.5 goes to them, and the remaining comes to us. So that is about co lending. In case of assignments. Uh, uh, We take the total income, make an NPV uh, based on the probability of that income accruing, reduce the cost of servicing from that, and that is offered. Got it. Uh, this is it. Thanks. Thank you, Adil. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants: you have to start and one to ask a question. Next question is from the line of Abhijit Tabrewal from Motila Loswal. Please go ahead. Ah, uh, thanks for allowing me to call. So, ah, uh, going back to the personal loans again, um, you yourself said okay, that. Sorry to interrupt. Your uh, audio is not clear. Can you speak through the handset, please? Is it is it better now? Yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Um, so again, going back to the personal loans again, um, you yourself said uh, that uh, you will kind of remain cautious uh, in personal loans. Uh, while given this, this small base, uh, it will kind of continue to grow strongly even, even from current levels. Uh, this, this kind of trying to understand why the risk adjusted returns are good at least at an industry level. <laughs> there have been discussions happening uh, around small ticket personal loans where the ticket sizes are less than fifty thousand rupees. Uh, have you had a chance to see uh, what proportion of your Customers or what proportion of your digital loans have ticket sizes below fifty thousand? Yeah, so below fifty. Now, no, okay. 
uh, personal loan is happening in all sizes, like this is the BNPL will be 5,000, 10,000, 3,000, 20,000, all kind of thing. So we'll have a reasonably a good number of our loans, there's a 50,000. But primarily our loans are to uh, self-employed professionals or the small shopkeepers, the businessmen, and the micro-enterprises. Uh, I think the difference. Another thing is that even personal loan as a category, as a asset class, you know, we can't paint it with one brush. There are many banks that do it very smartly and very cautiously. So when I said my worry is more about the new players where, uh, you know, they, they are still moving up on the learning curve in terms of credit and writing, and they are trying to achieve aggressive growth. Uh, so, you know, that is a, that's the class of lenders or the segment of customers that they are targeting is more risky. And, uh, but you know, the market is very big and the type of loan that, you know, gets categorized as personal loan again is very wide variety. But in our case, mostly now our focus, there can be a small part of it as a personal loan. Sometimes, you know, people like sole proprietors, they run the entire thing through their personal account. So it becomes the blurred line between personal and uh, business loan. But our focus for growth is more on MSME and business loans. Got it. Sir. I think the credit risk is different uh, when people are borrowing for consumption and people are borrowing for business or income generating activity. So just one follow up here. I mean, um, um, have you seen any divergence in terms of uh, delinquencies, collections, asset quality when it comes to uh, uh, MSME uh, business loans originated organically versus ones originated uh, through through partnerships? Any any divergence in collections, asset quality between organic sourcing and one originated through partnerships? So we have had multiple partners and our experience has been different. <coughs> so I can't reveal the names, but some of the partners where our experience is not good, then we realize that the profile that they target is different. So we slow down or discontinue that partnership, but it varies across, you know, because the whole segment is so heterogeneous and so wide. Uh, it's very difficult to uh, bracket, but you're right that our experience with different partners has been different and we keep taking corrective actions where uh, our experience is not good. Well, sir, this is useful. And just one last question, why are you taking an uh, enabling resolution for equity inclusion in your subsidiary Samasta as well? There, are you kind of looking to bring a, a strategic investor on board uh, or, or is it more like the parent infusing uh, capital into the microfinance subsidiary? No, it's not strategy, but we can get a private equity investor or parent can infuse. So either way, uh, we have to see, you know, what kind of opportunities or what kind of uh, investors we have and we take a call on that. So uh, it's like, you know, it's open. There's nothing which has been you know, done till now. Not to say this is again very useful. Uh, thank you and all the Thank you. Next question is from Lionel Vidhi. And analyst, please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. So I just wanted to ask, today our branch count is 4596 versus 3700 last year. So how many, um, so when do these branches uh, uh, start contributing at the operating uh, level and, and how much time does it take uh, to break even? Thank you. So branches, okay. In microfinance, when the branches grow above a particular size, is split it. So the cost structure in microfinance is much lower compared to say gold loan where we need to put a vault, IP camera and security and everything. So typically branches break even. I would say 80 to 90 percent of our branches break even between 80 to 24 months. Okay. There will always be some exceptions which take longer and some exceptions which can be much quicker. Okay, sir. Got it. Sure. Thank you so much. Thank you, Abhiji. Thank you very much. So we don't have anyone in the question queue. Thank you so much, Dan. We can... Uh, Would you like to give any closing uh, comments? Yeah. Thanks. A couple yeah, yeah. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. It was quite an intriguing session, and we really... Uh, we, we are welcome. In case you have any further question, you can drop an email at ir at uh, ifsfinance.com.
to IFL.com and we'll be happy to connect and give you uh, any further details that we, you might be looking for. Uh, and let's stay connected. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thanks, everybody, and uh, uh, season's greetings. This is a festive season to everybody. Thank you.